Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I want to talk to you for a minute about some of the updates that have come in the latest releases of Intel's Math Kernel library. Intel has introduced Conditional Numerical Reproducibility, CNR. Now this is an important feature that they've introduced in order for applications like weather-based applications to generate the same results when they're making their weather predictions again and again. You need a high level of accuracy with some large double precision numbers doing matrix multiplication. We want to make sure that all those numbers are produced the same way every time. If you're running an Intel Skylake or Sandy Bridge processor, you're going to see tremendous performance with those AVX2 and AVX512 instruction sets. Smaller complex matrix multiplications are all over science applications and numerical computing applications that developers are using when they're working with these libraries. And you're going to see tremendous updates and capabilities with those AVX2 and AVX512 instruction sets. Also, the Intel MKL, the Math Kernel Library, now has support for chi-square continuous distribution random number generations. All right, let's take a look at some sample code where we're going to do some double precision general matrix multiplication. And let's see how it performs on one of these latest processors that supports the AVX512 instruction set. Here I am inside this first example where we're going to do some double precision generic matrix multiplication. If we look at this example, you can see we're going to have 40 million elements in the size of our matrix that we're going to set up here. Scrolling down further, you can see where we're allocating some memory. If we have a problem here, we're going to free up some memory. Good. Initialize the matrix data. We're going to compute the matrix product using that MKL double precision general matrix multiplication function right here on line 71. It'll finish the computation and it'll output some information about what was contained inside the matrix. We'll deallocate some memory and we'll clean up. There are a couple other samples that come along with this including this one where we'll do the exact same thing except we're going to indicate a different number of threads each time that we run through it, stepping up accordingly by the power and capabilities of the processor that we're running on. I've already built these samples. Let's go over to the command line and see what the output is. Here's our first example, and we're going to take a look at the output. You can see the top left corner of matrix A are these values, and the top left corner of matrix B are those values, and here's the output when they're multiplied. Simple. Elegant output, okay, we can work with that. And now with threading turned on, we've got four threads that we can use because the processor that I'm running on for this example. Scrolling down, you can see when it runs for one thread, it took 17.49 milliseconds to complete the operation using one thread. Scaling up to two threads, we went down to 11 milliseconds. At three threads, we went down to 10. And at four threads, we step back up to 12.39. Interesting. The machine could have been running something else in the background. Your mileage may vary. All right, that was just a quick sample, some simple code to do matrix multiplication. Of course, when you add those features into your own applications, you're going to be able to scale and use that math kernel library in all kinds of great ways. All right. Check out the latest updates from Intel about the Math Kernel Library at intel.com, and we'll see you next time.